be overreacted. Yeah. Um, but uh, generally speaking, I would say that the press weren't that bad. I mean, I picked, um, I picked the um, paper that I wanted to do it to, uh, to break the news with, which is the Observer. And I gave them an exclusive, and we were on the front page. And then I did a couple of um, broadcasts for the BBC. I always try to do BBC broadcasts because I love you so much. Um, and um, then I went to America. Um, we did a big film for NBC and so on. So um, throughout my life and throughout Nikki's life, every so often, you know, we'll do something. I mean, if, if somebody is stupid and says, things about lesbians, I'll do something. I don't throw it in people's faces. Um, and um, I had a lot of anti-feminist, um, a lot of women saying that, um, fem so-called feminists, who were condemning me because I was doing these films and I wasn't allowing um, only females to be on, you, you know, taking pictures and part of the group who were doing the, the propaganda, if you like. Um, and it was very, very difficult because I was rowing with them and saying, well, look, you know, my, my boy is going to be a man one day. What, he, he should be barred from being part of it. You know, I believe that there should be emancipation for men and women. Um, so that got up their noses, mm -hmm. but I'm afraid I've got a habit of getting up people's <laughs> noses. Do you remember the birth? Oh, God, yes. What I was mean, it like? Was it a, well, a well, professional I mean, birth? I didn't know that Judy, who was my love at the time, was going to die of a heart attack nine months later, leaving me with her child as well. But, I mean, the birth was controversial in a kind of way because the matron of a hospital, because it was just a local hospital, the matron of a hospital um, said that I couldn't be interfered with or helped, if you like, by one of the uh, staff. And she said, that's ridiculous, and they didn't want her Judy to be with me, and we insisted. Um, so we got our own way. And yeah, it was a most fantastic moment. And I had my doctor, who was male, um, you know, who was over the moon because he knew this was the first, and they were all very excited about it. Um, I mean, it's only this dragon who um, decided for some reason I was going to go to hell. And the press intrusion started before the birth or predominantly after the birth? Well, no, it started actually five when Nikki was five years old. Um, it was one of those controversial things that other lesbians were just beginning to be inseminated. Um, and there was a magazine called Sappho, um, and they stupidly got duped by the Evening Standard into um, believing that two, two reporters were actually uh, lovers and they, they wanted to have a baby and, and um, they trundled off to this clinic and of course, you know, all hell broke loose um, because there were lesbians being inseminated and they thought that this was a terrible thing and, you know, these two girls had posed as um, lesbians and no one had done any uh, check-up on them. Um, they hadn't had any psychiatric um, proofing, so um, that they got exposed. Uh, Nikki's headmistress at the time, wonderful, wonderful woman, um, said, Janice, um, you're going to have to stand up for your sisters. And stand up for my sisters, I did. Yeah. And losing Judy so so close to the, the birth of Nikki, what impact did that have on, on you as a family dynamic as well? Oh, it was absolute hell, because Judy had neglected to get uh, divorced. Um, she was separated from her husband, and to complicate matters, uh, Lisa, um, who was then uh, seven years old, wasn't actually the product, although she was, he was, she was down on the birth certificate uh, of having uh, Judy's husband as a father, I had to uh, fight for her. I mean, I, I made history in that sense, because I was in court on and off for about 18 months, and could have even lost custody of Lisa. Uh, and Nikki, if I, you know, if I had lost the court cases, mm. but I mean, it was it was horrendous because I had to prove that uh, he wasn't the father, so I had to bastardise Lisa, um, and they were all procedures that had never been done before. It was always setting a precedent, um, and it was it was a horrendous crime. And of course, at the, at the same time, I mean, I was mourning or trying to mourn um, the death of. of of the person that I loved so much. And, and as a single mother, what was it like bringing up two kids? It would have been horrible if 
I'd been impoverished, but I was in a fortunate position where I wasn't what you would call wealthy uh, by today's standards, but I did have my own house and I didn't have a mortgage and I had business. Um, so, um, it, so financially, I was in a secure position. Um, but, you know, it was very, very difficult. And fortunately, um, I had met um, a, a lady that I liked very much long before I met Judy. And she came back into our life when Judy was alive. Um, and then she became sort of part of um, our, our family, if you like. And um, eventually, um, we decided that we would become lovers uh, and that we would set up home together. It was a huge thing asking her to take on two children, you can imagine. Mm. But um, we are still living together. Are you still together? We're still together 37 years later. Congratulations. Well, it's lovely. We're, we're not still lovers because time does that to you, but um, we, we have a deep love for each other and a deep friendship um, and um, it, it, it works fantastically and of course Nikki absolutely adores her. Well that was my next question, my next line of questioning about Nikki and how he is now as a man just getting married or just got married and, and having, you know, if you like two mums. Well he's fantastic, I mean I don't know if you listened to the programme that we did for Joanne Mayling up there in, in Birmingham last year but um, you know, he, he is a very sophisticated young man. He's a very successful businessman in uh, New York. And having two mothers has, has been a, an advantage. That, that is what he says. I can only repeat his words. Um, it has been an advantage. And he does an enormous amount of work in the States for uh, understanding of gay people. Um, he sponsors... Um, Gay Pride Week, and he, or Float for Gay Pride Week, and he does an enormous amount for collage, which is the understanding for children of lesbian and uh, gay people and transsexual mm -hmm. people. I'm just thinking, if naturally, and there are people who are born gay, there are people who are born heterosexual, I'm just wondering, naturally, if, for example, your son had been born gay, completely irrelevant, Janice, of, of your relationship with Judy at the time, how the press would have reacted to that? Well, you know the way they would have reacted. They would have said it's an inevitability, and that proves it, and it shows you, or if he'd been a drug addict, or if he'd been in trouble with the police. I mean, it was, we were on tenterhooks the whole time, whilst also giving him free reign. I mean, he was a young virile young man. I mean, he was at um, Northampton Rep when he was 14. And I mean, he was surrounded by gay people there. So I mean, there was enough temptation. And I'm sure he probably um, did try uh, and experiment. He hasn't um, fibbed about that. Um, and it wasn't for him. I mean, he, he, he at least had the opportunity to be able to choose and to judge for himself and um, nothing was thrown down his throat about homosexuality, just an understanding of loving, caring relationships and how much, how important it is to respect another's identity. And, and I feel that we've both done a, a good job with Nicky and the proof of pudding is that he's adored uh, wherever he goes and, and he is a spokesperson and very much respected in America. And you're looking forward to your first grandchild? I am really looking forward to it. I shan't be a hands-on mother because I don't know what to do with babies. I mean, I was never terribly good. I, I must admit, I had a nanny um, for Nikki and, um, you know, over the first couple of years. Um, but, um, yeah, I am really, really looking forward to it. And, and, and hopefully, um, you know, with the launch of my book, um, I'll be doing tours in the States, etc. So um, it'll be somewhere where we probably might consider eventually buying a small house really? or something like that. Are you going to well, move to America? We won't move there. Well, you, uh, they may not want me after they read my book. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, there, there's a possibility that we would go out there during the summer. Yes, well, we're old now. I mean, crikey. I mean, you know, by the time 
Um, I've done the tours and everything. I shan't be far off 70. Well, so. Janice, I'm looking at a photograph of you in The Guardian, I think it was a year ago. Yeah. And you look wonderful. Oh, thank you. You don't you, look 70. You know I love you. Can you have a little um, thought through your wardrobe and see if you've got a dress you could wear for me? <coughs> uh, just my type. Whatever turns you on. <laughs> Janice, thanks for talking to me. Okay. Nice speaking to you. And you. What a nice lady. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, are we got...